Hi, welcome to Prophetic Utterance. I'm your host, Jacqueline King. It's a pleasure to be to be back. I'm in to really just begin to release a, something I just heard. I was listening to a teaching. So this is just something short. I won't be too long with you. But it's talking about the virtue of God. You know, the, the virtue. And how it's so important to have the virtue of God in our lives. Amen. And so... My mind went back to um, the woman who had the issue of blood for over 18 years. And Jesus Christ himself was walking among the crowds. And finally, this woman reached the reached out to the bottom of the hem of his garment. And it says all the virtue left uh, Jesus. So I went to meditate and went to thinking about you know, the virtue, God's virtue. And and so I did some quick research and virtue means morals, high standards. Virtue means walking upright before God, having the righteousness of God. And so when you look at the coalition of the story, this woman was not a woman of virtue. She was an unclean woman. This woman was uh, suffering with loss of blood from her body and the standards in that time period was when the woman would come on her monthly that she couldn't be outside. She couldn't be around no one. She had to stay in until she was clean again. But on this occasion, she broke the law. And when Jesus stopped and he questioned, who touched me? Because he felt his virtue leave, his righteousness, the integrity of holiness the power of the Holy Spirit, amen, was no no longer around him or within him because something unclean touched him and he knew it. And that's why Jesus said, who touched me? You know, and this woman was so full of fear because she knew she had to share her testimony and she had to share about her suffering for the last 18 years. And she did. She gave her story. She shared how she went to many doctors. She had loss of income. You know, so much disabilities had occurred in her life because of being unclean. And I just want to say right now, just listening to the teaching from Apostle Paul Williams, he's speaking about dreams and he's giving interpretations of dreams. And when we dream and we dream about eating in the dream or spirits having sex with us in the dream these spirits are here to pollute us spiritually and when they pollute us spiritually they affect us in the natural in this realm amen and so we have to protect the virtue that god has given us that's why the word of god says so important You know, for us to be in right standing with God, be upright before the Father, righteous. You know, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. The virtue of God will be added unto you. Holiness, morals, high standard, the presence of the Holy Spirit will be added unto you. But when you are being polluted spiritually, Even through your thoughts and your imaginations, the enemy wants to attack you because he does not want you in the presence of God. And when there's sin in your life, it or my life, it blocks us from praying. It blocks us from seeking the kingdom of God. So we must pray. We must seek you first the kingdom of God. Now we understand why we should continue to seek, knock, continue to ask. Continue to be in right standing with God through the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because the enemy knows once you don't have the virtue, he can continue to torment you. He can continue to harass your life. And I know you don't want that to be your portion. Amen. I know you don't want that to be your portion. I know I don't want that to be my portion. I want to walk upright before the living father. I want to do things that is pleasing and acceptable unto our father in heaven. 
So, Father, I pray now for whomever's listening to me that your grace and your mercies shall be their portion, shall be our portion, double portion of grace, double portion of mercies. Yea, God, we pray for your deliverance, God. We pray for your protection. We decree and declare the word of God, Psalms 91, over our lives. We thank you, Father God, for the power of the blood of Jesus. We thank you, God, that we bathe ourselves, we wash ourselves daily with the blood of the Lamb, wash our minds, our thoughts, even be mindful of our conversation, God, that we do not pollute ourselves in Jesus' name. We don't want to, we don't want to assist Satan and his demonic powers. We don't want to give them aid, Father God. No, we want the Holy Spirit to be our rod and our staff. We want the Holy Spirit to be our counselor and our teacher, our Father. God, I just thank you for <laughs> the revelation. And I thank you, Father, that you have given me the voice to share to your people. For those who are listening now, for those who need to understand the atonement, the power, you know, the benefits of the blood. You know, imagine just walking with the wrong crowd. The virtue of God is no longer there with you. Imagine just being unequally yoked. And you're praying about your marriage relationships, but you know you're not in right standing with our Father. So your virtue is now suffering. Your virtue is now being polluted, not just in the carnal, but spiritually. And it's causing many problems, just like it did for the woman of God. I mean, for 18 years, she suffered in her body. Went to every physician, went to every doctor. Let's let's do it in today's translation, in the 21st century. Uh, This man and this woman kept going to different churches, seeing different prophets, different pastors, and no one had the answer for them because they was unclean. And when you're unclean, people generally don't give you the answer that you need. They will take your money. They will give you false prophecies. Have you believed something that is not true? Ah. But today, you will have your testimony. Just like the woman of God. Today, you will have your testimony. Today, you shall testify. Today, you will be an overcomer in Christ Jesus. Amen. Today, you will have double portion of love, peace, and kindness. Amen. Today, you will experience the breaker anointing upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, the atonement of the blood of Jesus will speak for you. Amen. Today, you shall have your testimony. Amen. God will do it again. Just like he did it for the woman who suffered for 18 years. He will do it for you again. But you must repent you must ask for forgiveness and forgive those who has done you wrong remove the offense from out of your heart ask the holy spirit to reveal to you any hidden offense in your life ask him to reveal to you anything that is not of him Yay, God, we want God to do something new in our lives, but we got to be consistent in our fellowship with him. We can't be in and out. We can't be lukewarm. We got to choose. Are we going to be hot or cold? Father said, if you are lukewarm, he will spit you out of his mouth. Our father don't set no limitations with us. So we need to stop setting limitations with him. And choose this day whom we are going to serve. Just like Josh, Joshua. He said, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. And I believe the virtue of God will be restored back to you. And you will be strengthened. And you will begin to do those things that is acceptable unto the Father. You will begin to walk upright before Father. You will no longer conform to the things of this world. But your mind will be renewed. Transformation will begin to occur. You will begin to understand what it is to have a moral life. You will begin to understand what it is to be holy. Because our Father say, be ye holy. Because I am holy. Amen.
You will begin to understand what true worship is like when you have the virtue of Abba Father in your life. And you won't fret. You will not be threatened. Amen. You will not be threatened by the attacks of the enemy because you will be able to rebuke Satan. You will be able to say, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. I just wanted to share that with you. I just wanted to just release this word before I forget it as the day goes on, you know, because sometimes, you know, we get that quick inspiration and the Holy Spirit will begin to minister to us. And it's important for me to document. I mean, so I wanted to document and share this with you. I want you to know that God is ready to do some great things in your life. If you just submit your will to him, if you just commit your life to him and and submit through your daily confession, submit through your attitude, submit. Amen. The word says it is better to be obedient than to sacrifice. Amen. And I know I have made multiple sacrifices in my life throughout the years and Probably longer than years. I mean, there's so much stuff that I have done. I probably don't even realize that I have done it. Amen. But I always ask the Holy Spirit to give me that revelation. Because I don't want to lose the virtue of God in my life. One of the things that I do remember, and I remember it very clearly. uh, When I was a little girl, I, I guess I was a very impatient little girl. Because... My uncle would always say to me, patience is a virtue because I was always asking to give me this and give me that. And I wanted it right then, right now. And my uncle would say, patience is a virtue. And then as I got older and I, you know, surrendered my life to Christ and I read the story about the woman with the virtue, um, with the, with the blood and the virtue of God leaving him, I was like, oh, that's what he means. That's what my uncle meant when I was a child. You know, have some morals about it. Have the power and the grace to be still, to know, to know what you're waiting on. And I feel like sometimes we lose our virtue because we get anxious. And the word of God tells us not to be anxious. Be anxious for nothing. Learn to wait upon the Lord. Learn to wait on God. Learn to be still. The virtue of God, you know, let me give you an illustration and then we're just going to close up with prayer. Uh, Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So the scripture tells us we must think about these being these things being noble, you know, being in right standing with God, being pure. These these this is a perfect illustration what virtue looks like in our lives. And if we don't have these type of virtues in our lives, It affects our mindset. It affects our behavior. Because we are no longer walking like Christ. Let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. When you have the mind of Christ, you you are going to be true. You're going to be noble. You're going to be right. You're going to be pure. You're going to be lovely. You're going to be admirable. Amen? And if anything is excellent, and everything excellent, that just like the scripture say, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Think about it. Think about it. Amen. So now, <laughs> just sitting there and listening to what the teaching was saying, the Holy Spirit just brought that revelation to me. The Holy Spirit revealed to me what it is. To have virtue in our lives. So I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That you will have the virtue of God in your life. We will have. Let us get in one accord. Father, in the name of your son Jesus Christ. Forgive us for our unrighteousness. Father, forgive us for not having virtue 
in our lives, our Father. Forgive us, Father God, for not being pure, true, and noble. Forgive us, Father God, for not being praiseworthy and walking in excellence and being right. Forgive us, Father God, for not exhibiting Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 in our lives. Lord, forgive us, have mercy upon us. Lord, sanctify us with the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, purify our hearts and our minds. Lord, teach us to walk like you walk. Teach us to hear your voice. Because, Abba Father, you always say that we will not follow the voice of a stranger. And Father, we have followed anything other than you. Forgive us, Abba Father. Forgive us for listening to the lies and the deception. Forgive us for allowing our virtue to be polluted by false prophecies. Forgive us, Father God, for allowing our virtue to be polluted with false teachings. Have mercy upon us, Abba Father. Have mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. Sanctify us with the blood. Wash us and purify us, God. Yea, God, as we submit our will to you, as we align ourselves to your will, align our spirit man with your spirit, as we surrender. And I'm praying for you. And I pray that you will continue to surrender to the will of the Father. I pray that you will continue to be obedient and not prideful. Not prideful, but having the virtue of God in our lives. And we will be just like that woman. Amen. We will share our testimony. And Jesus will say, your faith has made you whole. Amen. Your faith, whoever you are, man of God, woman of God, children of God. Your faith, our faith has made us whole complete and healed in Jesus name I pray and I'm your host Jacqueline King prophetic utterance God be with you amen amen